change so that's not the case. So archaeology often cites future generations as a core justification of its work. But building on what Sadie and Caroline said yesterday, in reality we don't know what kinds of knowledge or whose narratives will be valuable, beneficial or inspiring to those future projects. If we consider great lit reports, monographs and journal articles to in terms of long-term narrative building, wouldn't archaeology be better off adding a multimedia, multivocal set of offerings to meet the needs of varied audiences in the present and future, and in doing so, contribute to the building of more diverse, less monolithic futures? And um, so this is the focus of my PhD, which is a collaboration between MOLA and the University I'm looking at the kind of um, dominant tropes that inform interpretation and development of the work. And then I'm exploring what happens if those tropes are kind of slightly unsettled or approached differently. Specifically, I'm looking at large scale linear infrastructure schemes. Um, so, over the last year, I've been working alongside my field and post text teams on the A428 road scheme. I'm talking to people at all levels of the company and some of the relevant. So the core themes, um, or like I said, the dominant traits that have come from my data so far, relate to how these highly commercial environments operate, as well as how archaeological thinking and interpretation happen in these environments. And these include fragmentation and siloing, speed and control, as well as wonder and pitch. Um, so I'm using these as kind of creative jumping off calling these experiments narrative blueprints. Um, so with narrative blueprints, I'm interested in the accessibility of archaeology's long-term products. And I don't just mean practical abilities to access data. Um, so this one too is about what conditions are needed for audiences, um, including archaeologists, to experience curiosity, wonder and inclusion in their interactions with the past, and how those conditions So narrative blueprints might include, um, for example, interventions in the process, co-designing the process of the outcomes, systematically working with external collaborators, um, or the kind of drawing out of counseling narratives from the material. But importantly, um, the concept isn't meant to be descriptive. What I hope to do is demonstrate the potential of this as an approach with the PhD um, and produce a narrative blueprint. underlying goal of creating a rich and varied resource of archaeological knowledge that can sit alongside the outputs that we already know and trust in the archive. So this is a nice idea, but how can narrative blueprints navigate these two areas of facility? Um, I think the main point here that I want to make is that, um, again, reiterating I think if narrative blueprints are really going to make an impact, they need to be written in at the project design stage. Um, so the time and money is effectively ring fence at the inception of the project. Why would a developer agree to that? Um, well, the production of diverse, inclusive legacies is really relevant to government requirements for long term positive impact for development and infrastructure, of course, operates in that realm of government level policy. Um, Um, space to take a breath, space to collaborate, 
Jesus. Jesus.